go, guys. That is the GeoFence feature of the APM system. Works really, really well. What is it all about? How do you set it up? Let's go back to the studio and I'll show you. So guys, we're back in the studio right now. I've got our trusty S500 here plugged into my laptop running Mission Planner. So I'm gonna explain the rest of this geofence. Now, if you remember from the copter episode connecting everything to Mission Planner, I'm not gonna go through that again. Right now I've plugged in using the USB cable instead of the wireless telemetry, because I actually don't want the copter powered right now while I'm screwing around with this stuff in the studio. Just a little safety thing. So, we're plugged into Mission Planner, we've connected with the computer, and we're over here on our config and tuning tab. And we've come down to the second highlighted item here, which is geofence. Now we've clicked on geofence, and you see over here to the right, there's a couple of things. There's a little radio button to enable or disable the fence. In this case, it's disabled. I'll explain why in a second. We've got our geofence type set to altitude and circle. We've got the action for the geofence set to return to launch or land. And we've got our altitude set. We're at 15.24 meters, which is about 50 feet of altitude. We're at 22.86 meters, which is 75 feet of radius and our return to home altitude is about nine meters around 30 feet. Now, what does all that mean? Geofence is really cool. Don't have a tin can around. Basically what it does, what do you have a tin can around? Basically what it does is it's like dropping a big can down over the copter. It creates a fence, a shape, or a pattern that the copter can't exit. So in this case, you're flying along and you reach the edge of the fence. And as you've seen in the video, the copter stops and returns back. This is a safety thing, it's very, very cool. You're basically setting an area, an imaginary area in space outside of which the copter can't leave. That gives you huge advantages, guys. If you're doing video or maybe you're flying an illegal flying site, but there's stuff nearby that you don't wanna accidentally fly into or if you're afraid you might lose control, you can set this fence and it gives you this kind of awesome safety box that keeps your copter in. Very, very cool stuff, very easy to set up, very easy to use. One other thing I'd like to show you about the way I've got this set up, if you come down to the extended tuning tab where we have all those PID settings and everything else, if you look down here, there's a little tab that says channel eight option, and I've got that on fence. That's so when I'm flying this copter, I can turn the fence on and off with a switch. I think that's pretty handy. Maybe you have a generic set of geofence settings you wanna leave in the copter, and you can do that and turn it on and off with a switch. So you're not always limited. Maybe you're flying in a place where you know you can fly very far, you can be free, you can do that, but if you want to suddenly limit the copter or turn on that fence, you can do it with a switch and it will anchor that fence to wherever the copter was first turned on and armed, it anchors it to home. So guys, that's what the geofence is and why you might wanna use it. Let's flash back real quick to the geofence setting screens and let me go through that real fast. So here we have you know, the type at the top here, it's altitude and circle. Now you can choose one or the other. For instance, if you don't want a maximum ceiling, you can turn off the altitude function. Or if you only want a maximum ceiling, you can turn off the circle function. That way you can fly as far as you want in a direction, but it stops your altitude. Or the other way around, you can go as high as you want, but only so far. It's a couple of cool things. Um, the way the fence is set up, if you blow through the first part of the fence, let's say you're just in fast forward flight and you're cruising. When you go through the fence the first time, it triggers that return to launch and land behavior. If you blast straight through the fence too fast, it goes into an immediate land process where it just stops and sets itself down. Again, just a safety thing so you can't go too far. Uh, that's here under this action tab. You can set that up if you're flying like with your phone connected or with Mission Planner connected, you can set this to tell you with report only. In other words, all it's doing is indicating to you through Mission Planner that it's gone past the fence. It won't do anything, it'll just let you keep flying, but it'll tell you, oops, you know, you've exceeded your fence level. Or you can set it to return to launch and land, which is what I've got doing, so that if I go outside of that circle, it comes back, like you guys saw in the first video. Now, I set the fence really, really small. You wouldn't normally have, you know, a 50-foot ceiling and a 75-foot radius. You'd put it, you know, maybe a 400-foot ceiling, so you stay under that FAA legal sort of maximum altitude, and you could also set it to, you know, 1,500 feet or half a mile in distance. So you can fly as far as you want. The idea here is just to create a sort of layer cake or can over your copter that gives you a, a maximum safety fence. That's really all this is about. Altitude, radius, and return to launch altitude you set right here. Return to launch altitude is a little bit important. You wanna make sure you set that so that when you trigger the geofence, the copter comes back at a safe altitude. Obviously you don't want it coming back at chest level or anything creepy like that. 
So guys, that's gonna do it for Geofence, kind of a quick one today. Don't worry, still got an awesome episode coming with advanced waypoints with our S500 here. As always, remember guys, subscribe to the channel. We love seeing those comments. Stay tuned for more HK Pilot Man.